So uh, I'll start. It. I will speak in English because I think there are people watching from from Zoom. So it's not only the the two <laughs> the two that don't speak Portuguese. There are people uh, outside outside the country that are accessing this. Um, so Closer is a company with 18 years old working on AI and data. So we have a long history of this. Uh, 18 years is majority, right? So, uh, and I bring this question, okay? My first question, why do we have a brain? Okay. So when we speak about artificial intelligence, we always forgot oh, what is the reason for the natural one? Not you specifically. I'm not asking you for you specifically, but why the monkey that left the tree and started? Uh, why was the purpose of this thing, which is heavy, energy consumption, water consumption, and uh, why not bigger legs or bigger eyes or bigger other things? Why a brain? Well, it's. I'm a theoretical physicist, so most of these things should be like strange, but uh, let me go and think of a screen. So this screen is 10 by 10. Okay. If I'm, and I want this screen to have whatever information comes in. Okay. And uh, if I wanted to learn all the possibilities of this screen, this screen has 2 raised to 100 possibilities, which is 10 raised to 30 possibilities, which means that if I learned 1 billion a day, I would take more than the age of the universe to understand that screen. Okay? So, if, but if, I just add 3 simple pixels, and interconnect all those pixels by common features, and I decided to put here three, and there's a reason for that. Uh, and people from machine learning will understand this as a neural network. So if I do this, I transform the 10 raised to 30 into 300 parameters. 303, if you count the three that I have. So we have a brain because it's a remarkable machine of compression of information. And it's, it takes from 10 raised to 30 to 300, which is remarkable, right? It's the reason why we have a brain and not bigger legs or bigger whatever. But it's not just as interconnecting things it's also, it means a change in geometry. I just changed the position because I have that because people in machine learning I used to see as that. But if I do this, which is the same thing, we can see that geometry changed completely. So we don't have a background anymore. The background was scattered all over. The white part of the slide is not part of the universe. Right? So what the brain did was to go to this from this flat geometry, where I have 10 raised to 30 different parameters, an integer dimensional space, like one dimensional, two dimensional, three 3D. We all understand this, right? To what it was called a fractal geometry, right? Where there's no background. Okay. So the, this change of geometry is the key to understand what everybody is speaking today, generative AI. And because if I try to read a fractal geometry, what happens is that the brain would not know how to process it. Why is this important? Why is this guy telling us about this? Okay. Well, uh, the reason is that everything that 
Every universe, every system that has an inflation that grows by itself, every system that grows by itself, and we call it inflation, has a fractal geometry. So the economy has a fractal geometry. The social nets as a social The political systems, we saw Ricard here today with problems with elect electoral polling. Politics, the biological universe you heard about, Katya, and physical space itself as inflation. The universe is always expanding. So what happens is the flat world for which our brain was made, it's just an illusion. Is the illusion of living in a very tiny spot of the universe that allows us to see things as flat. Got it? It's a wonderful machine, but it was built for the nature where we born, right? Not for the systems that we decided to study and we decided to build. Some of them are built by us, some of them are systems that we, wouldn't, we were not designed to see things at the universe scale. We were just designed to see things uh, on our savanna. Right? Uh, but there's one thing that, as I can see, only humans can do. So that model, that neural network that we use, and people from machine learning can understand perfectly, Right. It's always bidirectional. Right. I can put, I can transform the flat geometry into a fractal geometry, which is our internal representation of that screen, but I can also go in this direction. I can go from this fractal geometry into that flat geometry again. That's why I put it three. Right. Those three were important to make this direction. And I can do Another thing, which is, I copulate two brains. And say, so why do you copulate two brains? Well, I go to the fractal, and I put in the flat again. We will call it writing. And then we go to the flat, and go to the fractal again, and we call it reading. So if I put both things into a computer, right, we will end up with this thing. And people from machine learning will say, well, that's an autoencoder. This is the building block of ChatGPT and all generative AI that we know. Right? What is done is actually being more sophisticated than one brain. It's not better than the human brain seen as all, but it's actually two brains working together. So we are already outside the capabilities of one brain. But this is the building block of it. So web model, okay, which is strange, sorry, <laughs> I think uh, say, allows us to learn not only the pixels, but the connections between the pixels. This is quite, a, quite an achievement, right? Because I can see what connects pixel A and pixel B, right? And this connection is expressed in these three new abstract pixels that I created as a conditional probability, which is, so if I use this, I can see the conditional probability of connecting pixel A and pixel B. I can also do that with text, right? because text is inside our head, like a network, like a fractal geometry. So I can connect Saint with Crispin and know the probability of getting Crispin in the end by putting a Saint. So you're already seeing why he's the building block of ChatGPT. So what I did is if I put this word, afterwards it comes to that. Got it? So, if I put several layers of this, I can learn the interconnections in several scales. So words, phrases, paragraphs. 
and poems. So I, I asked ChatGPT, I also made ChatGPT experience, and asked to give me the St. Crispin's Day speech from Henry V of Shakespeare on the Snoop Dogg style. And actually, it was remarkable because <laughs> where is it? On oh, gentlemen in New England now are sleeping like logs. <laughs> this is amazing. Actually, uh, nobody could do this better because, well, it was made by two brains at the same time. Right? It is quite a remarkable thing. But this, what I want to, to, to take you is to the achievements that generative AI can take and for which Today, two people at least talk about Alpha uh, Fold, which is how with genetic code we can take the structure of proteins. But there is another consequence in the middle of this, which makes the generative AI in even more important than what we think. So when Remember the picture of the reading and writing is that all to the 2,500 years of mathematics that we developed, we developed for the world that we saw, not for the world we didn't saw. So most of the mathematics, namely calculus, statistics, works on one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions, but not on fractal dimensions. Right. And this is the biggest importance in generative AI, is that we can bring fractal geometries into a place where mathematics works. So what I'm going to show to you is projects in which we didn't use ChatGPT as a productivity uh, model, as a productivity tool, because when we do things that humans already do, well, that's productivity, that's very important, and most of you have been listening to productivity. But, uh, when you do things that humans don't do, we are talking about progress. So the, the things that I'm going to show to you, the three cases, actually four, because I have one the day after, the day before yesterday, is our problems in which we take use of that place where the mathematics worked or where we need to get mathematics to work from a system that where it doesn't, it doesn't work in the beginning. And the first is, I call the word vector problem, is imagine that you need ballet dancers. And there's no ballet dancers. So you have three choices. You forget the ballet dancer, you don't hire a ballet dancer. You forget dancers and you hire someone that knows ballet, or you forget ballet and you hire someone that dances. Okay. And you say, why do I need that? Well, if you are a bank and you are trying to hire the next branch manager, all the people that you have in the branch were never branch managers. You want to know what are the skills that interconnect to know which one would be the best bank manager. And to do that, you need to take all the skills and put into a mathematical form. That mathematical, mathematical form is that place in the middle that you saw in that scheme. Right? <laughs> Using to, as a, the second, one of my favorites, is the ice cream problem. The ice cream problem is like this. Okay? Uh, this. This examples mean classes of projects that we developed, right? So it's, it's a bunch of projects, and this um, is a class of ones. This, well, I go to the supermarket to buy ice cream from a specific brand. 
Right? And then I reach the supermarket. I go to the fridge, and there's no chocolate ice cream of that specific brand. Again, three, three choices. I buy peanuts and forget. I buy chocolate ice cream from another brand. And I buy vanilla ice cream from that brand. Meanwhile, at the brand's database, only one record gets there. I bought vanilla ice cream. All the other three are not there. So the guy in marketing will say, as this remarkable statistic inside is, sales drop due to customer behavior to radical change. Now what they like is vanilla. So forget about chocolate, we are going to make vanilla. Uh, that thing doesn't happen if you can know the conditional probability, the interconnection between the sales of vanilla and the sales of chocolate. Trust me, most of our customers do not have two flavors <laughs> to choose from. So we have one thing with a, a automotive, an automotive uh, brand. They have 10 raised to 18 different possibilities of making a car, not two. 10 raised to 18. And someone has to choose which ones should be made. Okay. Third problem, the unicorn problem. And you can see it like froth if you wish, right? How can I trust you? Okay. Frauds are usually, and these unicorn problems, are usually statistically very low in number events, like 0. Point something percent. It's something that statistics is just useless in this matter, okay? So, uh, What we do is the opposite of what we have seen, is that we are trying to make the condition probability of that thing happen in different conditions. So we start in one condition, in two conditions, in three conditions, and we are going to see things drop. And at some point, we are going to decide, no, you are impossible. So you are fraud. Right? But we need that pass through the entire variable set and say, well, if I just take, I put this example, buy my son doesn't buy Sanskrit books in Australia bookstores at 5 a.m., right? But if I start cutting all these conditions, what about if I take 5 a.m.? What if I take Australian bookstores? What if I take Sanskrit books? And the probability will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and otherwise, smaller and smaller and smaller. Got it? So, this is basically what we are doing at Closer with generative AI models. We are not making, we also make, sorry, we also make all those productivity ones. But I, was, I wanted to take this ones because I knew that nobody else would take that. Uh, the reason for the three. Remember I told you that I put three new ones, why not put four? Why not put two? Why not put 12, right? There is a reason, right? And the reason is, are those three the necessary and sufficient to have this two-way thing? Can I reproduce the screen from these three with the three under parameters as well as I build the parameters with these three and go there. So, in other words, are these, if I put three numbers here, will I get that screen with that five? Or I'll get something spurious, is if I have more than three, or I have lots of information if I have less than three. Those, that was a very simple screen, right? And that very simple screen, I could go directly and say, well, it's height. Uh, it's X, Y, and black or white. Pretty, pretty, pretty easy, right? But most of the problems are not. So, uh, 
And if you have the correct number, why do I need training? Right? From that screen, I would not read training. I could find it analytically. The same thing for all the problems. And that's something that we are working on. And also, why do we need flat databases? Why do you need databases in tables? If the information <laughs> is going that way anyway, why do we need it in flat databases? Also in closure, we are starting to work with, fractal, uh, with, sorry, with graph databases to handle these things, okay? not with table ones. Because it's, as you see from the compression ratio from 10 raised to 30 to 300, it's stupid to have this 10 raised to 30 storage, right? And if it isn't the necessary and sufficient, what are the consequences? Right? And you see, <laughs> Manuel Diaz told us about today, so they have spurious answers in, in chat GPT. They are things that nobody can explain. Where did he get that thing? Right? This is something that is way out of the necessary and sufficient uh, number information that we need to store. Okay? And the last is just for bragging. Right? I don't <laughs> this I knew uh, two days before. So in closer, actually, uh, in collaboration with the Astro Institute for Astrophysics and Space Sciences, we had this uh, paper published on uh, radio galaxies with machine learning. Uh, this is bragging, right? The first thing is because I can. And the second, <laughs> for one reason, first I can. And the second are uh, to just for you to take the idea if you can handle things of the size of radio galaxies. Uh, I bet we deserve an opportunity to see your problem. Right. Thank you very much. I'll be around if you have some questions. Our mission, my contact. <laughs>